open country. So I think the version, the Islamic version that we have in here is not very conducive to jihadism, to extremism. Right. So However, it is... What about the import? What about guys coming back through here, for it, example? It is that... very possible. It's very possible. They are all over the place. ISIS is looming very large, just next door in Iraq and all over mm. the place. So you have to be in guard. And I think the UAE is wise enough to have a legislation as a, as, as a preventive measure. Mm. But it's a regional problem rather than a homegrown UAE problem. Let's talk about the, the wider region. Let's, let's allude to the GCC, the, the the, the grouping of these the six countries in this sort of, you know, sort of loosely grouped uh, regional um, committee, as it were. Uh, you alluded to counterterrorism measures and legislation which the UAE is getting on its books. Arguably the most powerful man in the GCC, Saudi Arabia's King Abdullah, has been the most vocal regional leader, it has to be said, when it comes to the ISIS threat. And he said, and I quote, terrorism knows no border and its danger could affect several countries outside the Middle East. He's been quoted as saying last week, if we ignore them, I am sure they will reach Europe in a month and America in another month. At a meeting of the GCC on Saturday, its members made a commitment to act against terrorist threats that face the region and indeed the world and to fight terrorist ideology, which is contrary to Islam. Tonight, we are hearing about the arrest of 88 potential uh, militants or those in Saudi Arabia who authorities believe were a threat. We've had the Grand Mufti being very outspoken about ISIS. Thoughts? Well, Saudi Arabia has suffered from jihadism, from Al-Qaeda, from extremism, just as much as anybody else. And they know it, how dangerous it could be. And I think there is this ideological affinity that everybody's talking about. So the Saudis are on guard, Saudis are on alert. I think they are very serious about attacking the problem, both internally, if there is any, and later on regionally. I think they are seeing the threat coming very close mm. to their borders. So I think, no doubt, the Saudis are taking this very seriously. While we're clear. on the GCC, tell me how you read this rift, this ongoing rift between Saudi, the UAE, on the one hand, and, and, and Qatar on the other because the Muslim Brotherhood story which is a story of political Islam of course is one that they really they, there are real divisions about what is going on here. You know, we had a meeting in Jeddah just almost a week ago mm. and I think they pressed the freeze button to freeze the problem from deteriorating from escalating any further and from falling into you know going mm. into, into a free fall so we are so relieved that they did freeze the problem however the problem is not resolved it is going to be resolved once we see the three ambassadors back to Doha so it's a freeze rather yep. than a resolution of the problem these are ambassadors that were withdrawn from three of the Recall, UAE yes. Um, yes, sorry the, the GCC countries back in March um, as, a, as a statement uh, against Doha all right here's a I want you to have a look at this, uh, this graphic that I'm going to bring up here. So here's a reminder of the Islamic militant groups in North Africa and the Middle East. I'm going to get wider than the GCC here and get across the entire region. Al-Qaeda may be the roots of the tree of terror. It was founded in the late 80s, of course, by Osama bin Laden. The Taliban established their own Islamic state in Afghanistan and sheltered Al-Qaeda. A Q offshoots have also surfaced in recent years, including... Uh, AQ in the Arabian Peninsula, based of course in Yemen, and we are again seeing problems there to date. Uh, and Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, operating in North Africa. Al Qaeda has inspired other groups like Somalia's Al Shabaab. Again, an attack on the leadership there from a US drone only in the last 24 hours. And Boko Haram. The group behind the mass kidnapping of more than 200 teenage girls in April. Al Qaeda in Iraq was established in 2004, but over time it evolved and turned into the newest branch of the ideological tree and most, almost, also the most dangerous Islamic State in Iraq and Syria or ISIS, or if you were listening to those who are allegiant, uh, who, 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 uh, who are. Um, Supporters, they will call it the IS, the Islamic State. Do you, by the way, call it the Islamic State? Do you dignify this group Not at all. with that term? Not at all. Not at all, because I don't think they represent How Islam in any said. version of it, or in any iota mm. of, of conceivable possibility that Islam really breeds this kind of thing. Mm. You have extremism, you have fascism. Every society mm -hmm. sometimes grow through these episodes. So, and this is one of us, yes, but these are extremes and not necessarily representatives of the main 
remain Islam. I'm just wondering briefly whether you think it might be ISIS or IS that may eventually bring the two regional enemies together, Iran and Saudi, in one fight against this one group. They are talking. We have seen them talking in the country. So I think the version, the Islamic version that we have in here is not very conducive to jihadism, to extremism. Right. So However, it is... What about the import? What about guys coming back through here, for it, example? It is that's... very possible. It's very possible. They are all over the place. ISIS is looming very large, just next door in Iraq and all over mm. the place. So you have to be in guard. And I think the UAE is wise enough to have a legislation as a, as, as a preventive measure. Mm. But it's a regional problem rather than a homegrown UAE problem. Let's talk about the, the wider region. Let's, let's allude to the GCC, the, the the, the grouping of the, the six countries in this sort of, you know, sort of loosely grouped uh, regional um, committee, as it were. Uh, you alluded to counterterrorism measures and legislation which the UAE is getting on its books. Arguably the most powerful man in the GCC, Saudi Arabia's King Abdullah, has been the most vocal regional leader, it has to be said, when it comes to the ISIS threat. And he said, and I quote, terrorism knows no border and its danger could affect